Hi, um, today we're going to talk about the very low birth weight baby and the resuscitation that surrounds that baby. Um, no. There's a couple of things that occur when the NICU gets notification that we're going to have a low birth weight baby born. Um, generally, they're less than 28 weeks. Um, I do have to say that sometimes if we get notification of a 31 or 32 weeker but is weighing less than one kilo, we would kind of follow the same protocol because that baby is going to be small have no fat on board and uh, can lose their temperature really quickly. So there's two things that we actually bring with us from the NICU when we're coming to this delivery. Um, one is a heat pad. You'll see it, it's in a box like this. Um, and the heat pad is, what it is, is they're fantastic. Um, it actually looks like one of those ice packs that we use for our moms that have delivered. Um, to activate it, you just, Crack it up like this, it gets activated and it lasts for two hours. So it's fantastic for transporting the baby from the operating room or labor room upstairs to the NICU and beyond. The other thing that we bring is babies that are born very small, we do not dry the fluid that's off them. So we want the ambient, ambient heat in the room to be quite warm. I know our operating rooms are usually freezing. So we usually want to jack up the heat a little bit so that it's warmer in there than normal. Um, and of course, make sure that the warmer on the bed is cranked to at least 100%. Right. Um, so we want it as warm as possible for this new little person that's about to come. So there's two types of bags that we use. This is the older bag. You may see that coming. Um, they come actually wrapped um, in a sterile packet. So occasionally what we do, the OB team will take one of these and have it sterilely over where the baby is about to be delivered. But more often than not, the NICU team has it on the warmer, ready to wrap the baby up. This is the newer type of bag that we started using recently. The beauty of this, we're gonna use this just for this exercise. There's a little hoodie on there. And we do find um, there's a pad also at the back, which will help us keep that baby in a neutral head positioning. So we do like to use this as well. So let's say baby's not born yet. Um, Nick, you get the opportunity to put the heat warmer down. So this is nice and warm. Never put a baby directly on the heat warmer, of course. We've got a blanket in between. I've got my bag positioned. The OB delivers the baby. The baby comes over to us with the appropriate tone. Um, so baby comes over, baby goes immediately into the bag. Once we have the baby here, we we'll put the baby in. And then the object of it is, is that the amniotic fluid that is on the baby is warm. It keeps the baby warm for transport and for resuscitation or whatever we're going to do. So there's a little Velcro strip here. Now there's a couple of things that it does actually happen. Let's say uh, the baby's going to need some form of um, respiration assistance, whether it's intubation or facial CPAP. What we try to do is get the baby stable, usually on CPAP and transport up to the NICU. Um, if we have to intubate, um, we will, you will see us cleaning off the face because there is fluid on the face. So generally the only part that we would clean at all to make sure that we've got adherence with tapes or anything like that is the face itself. The other thing is um, we will put the baby on the oximeter. Um, and what I do now, it, it is debatable, rather than open up the bag to get the hand out to get my pre ductal sat, what I will do is I actually poke a little hole in the plastic to get access to the hand. Um, so here I have my little hand sticking out. I may have to dry that off a bit. So generally, when I know these kind of babies are going to come, these saline wipes are in the cart. Um, so while I'm waiting for the baby to get delivered, I'll have a whole load of wipes ready mm -hmm. to go and warmed on the bed. So I've got my saline wipe. I dry the little hand off just to improve my conductivity to the oximeter and I'll get my O2 probe in place. Um, so there we go, we've got, the ox we've got that on and hopefully we will have pickup pretty shortly. So my oximeter, no there's nothing to stop me putting the baby's little hand back in again, right? And mm -hmm. um, my pickup is good, I got my oximeter set to go and we're going to get a sat.
The other thing that we do, so let's say we have to resuscitate this baby and he needs cardiac leads, then we're going to have to open up the bag. Mm -hmm. um, but what we'll try to do is minimize the surface area that we leave exposed so that the baby is dropping heat. So I'm all set to go. I've got my warm saline, just clean off from my three spots from my cardiac lead. One, two, and three on the baby. Close them back up again. My leads are out here and I connect them. Mm -hmm. Can so, I ask a quick question? Yes, of course. Um, so I noticed you didn't dry off the baby. Why was that? So we don't dry off the baby. Um, very, very different to a newborn. Um, so a baby that's um, nearer term. We dry off to stimulate, right, to get the baby crying. This baby, hopefully, <laughs> is crying and active. Um, but what we don't do is dry off because the fluid that is on the baby, the amniotic fluid, is actually warm. So we're preventing insensible loss of fluid from the baby where the baby could get cold. So let's say I dry the kid off, I dry the baby off. Now I've created, I've remove the barrier of heat that was on this little very low birth weight baby. So that's the reason why we do it. And it, as I said earlier, it's generally our babies that are kind of less than a kilo, our babies that are usually less than 28 weeks. Sometimes we have a 30 weeker, a 32 weeker, IUGR that are they're born at 750 grams we would follow the exact same process because mm -hmm. the whole object of this is to keep the baby warm and keep their temperature stable mm -hmm. while we resuscitate and get the baby mm -hmm. to the NICU does that answer your question yes thank you so very much. good okay so um, as we're doing that so now I have my baby here and um, let's just quickly look at the Neopuff as well because this Neopuff we refer to it as a Neopuff because that's the brand name. Mm -hmm. But when you did your NRP, mm -hmm. you read in the book, the T-piece connector. And this is what it is. Look, there's my T. It's my T-piece connector. With the introduction of this, we have saved so many babies from getting pneumothorax. It's absolutely fantastic. And when the initial resuscitation happens, we will have our bag ready. It will be hooked up to the normal pressures. Uh, the liters and set at 21% room air because all babies get resuscitated at 21%. But if we're going to use our bag initially, um, while the baby comes out either for blow by oxygen or to give a little bit of CPAP, I'm going to have my bag set up in the usual way, set to a CPAP of, can anyone tell me, what do we usually set them at? Five, five, correct, yeah. So we'll set the bag to a CPAP of five. We'll have it all set to go. We will, of course, have our smallest face mask available, all set to go for the baby. But the danger you have when you're using one of these flow inflating bags is the amount of pressure that the baby gets is determined by the pressure of the hand of the person that's resuscitating. And, you know, this is an anxiety provoking situation. I, you know, I'm guilty myself of over in, uh, over pressurizing the bag and going above the pressure that is needed. So with the introduction of the T-piece connector, what we've been able to do is actually set the CPAP and the PIP that this baby is going to get right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So let me turn on the oxygen so that we can see exactly what we're doing here. You know, it's eight to 10 liters. I'm using 10 right now just because the fact that we have a tank. And here, now there's two important things. One is the CPAP pressure. So that's the continuous positive airway pressure that the baby gets when they have the bag in place. The other thing is the PIP, which is the peep, or the peak inspiratory pressure. So if I'm resuscitating a baby this small, the maximum pressure that I wanna to give to this baby is 20. The max maximum peep I want to give is five. So we would say the baby is 20 over five. Inspiratory pressure, 20. CPAP pressure of five. Um, so if you have a look at this right now, I'm going to occlude and pretend that I have it on the baby's face. By looking at this, you can see I've got, so let's say I have this on the baby. Let's see if I can get a perfect seal. Oh, I have, good. So if you look at the seal that I've created on this baby, I'm now creating a CPAP pressure of five for this kid. 
I'm not doing it, the T-piece connector is doing it. So if I wanted to adjust it, let's say we've got poor lung compliance and I want to go up a little bit more, can you see? I'm dialing the dial on the top to increase it to eight. So you can see, so we use this T-piece connector for all ages that are born, not only for the very low birth weight baby. So there I have it, my CPAP pressure, five. The other thing that I want to do is Let's say I'm giving the baby a couple of breaths. Now look at this, this is great. Instead of squeezing that bag, not knowing how much pressure I'm giving, I'm actually just gonna clue the top. There's my Pippa 20. Can you see it? So every time I give this baby a breath, I'm giving him a pip of 20. So we're 20 over five. And actually you can see it. Look, if you look at the baby, I think I can get some rise in the chest. <coughs> can you see it? Breath? Mm -hmm. Yes. Breath? Yep. Breath. So let's Can say you we tell me intubate. Again how you start with, um, uh, set it to 20? To 20? Oh, yes, of course. Um, so let's say um, for that purpose, I have set it already because mm -hmm. I'd had an opportunity to get organized with it. But say I need poor compliance again and I need to go up on my PIP. Your dial for your PIP is right here. Can you see it right here? Mm -hmm. So watch now. So what am I at about there, about 25, 26 maybe, if I have to go up on my pit pressure, there it is right there. It's great because it gives you like, hopefully we do Red not zone. resuscitate exactly with any pip greater than 30. But if you think about it, let's say we've got a baby that um, has very poor lung compliance, even a full term baby, you can actually set it so that you know it. Say we have to intubate the baby, we've got the breathing tube, you can actually hook it up to your ET tube yes. that's on there, and you can provide your P pressure and your P pressure on the ET tube. Great. So we use this device for babies that are both getting facial CPAP and babies that have been intubated nice. already for the transport. Okay. So that is the beauty of these TPs. And really, at all times, what we, with any delivery that we go to, we make sure that this is set up correctly for immediate use, but we try to move to the Neopuff as quickly as possible. I think that that probably um, concludes everything that we need to cover on this station. Anybody got any questions? Thank you so no. much. Good. Okay. Thank